I got two frags today. Welcome to Reef Diary, day 97. My friend Ryan came over today to pick up his order and brought me two frags. A pink panther and a pearl berry. Very excited about these. Both of these corals were dipped, then they were put in the work tray, and now I'm going to go ahead and glue them in my reef in the two chosen spots that I've selected for today. I also did some filming of the tank from above because I thought, let's kind of look and see how things look from above. I dropped my phone into a smartphone floater and started exploring my reef. Something I didn't discuss when it came to placing corals in the tank that I really should have got into, but it, it wasn't pertinent at the time, but I was thinking, you know, I'm sure there are going to be hobbyists out there that wish they knew the answers to this. It was where in the system do they belong? And when it comes to these SPS corals, we usually want them at the midpoint or the upper point of the tank where there's a lot of flow. And we would put things like zoanthids and plate corals and things way down low in the tank because they don't need nearly as much light and they definitely don't need as much flow. So when I was showing you how I placed all these different corals in my reef with the putty and the glue, I was mainly dealing with SPS corals and they were all going on the rock work that was actually assigned or, or set up so long ago just to put these corals upon. The most popular reason for putting corals up high is to get them closer to the light so they get plenty of intensity and there's lots of open water flow right there compared to down in the rock work where the flow could be obstructed by rock or coral colonies that are just blocking water from moving around in the tank easily. So if you're trying to put things in your tank and you're wondering where they should go, if it's a coral that needs a lot of flow, you usually put it up high. Now, that being said, I have had SPS grow perfectly fine down on my sand bed, completely ignored. I wasn't worried about their flow. I wasn't worried about anything. They were just there and they were doing their thing. They grew and they got bigger. And then eventually I put them somewhere else in the tank. So you don't have to absolutely have them on the rock work, but usually that looks so much better. You don't have all that mess on your sand bed that uh, makes it impossible to clean the sand. Guidelines are great for knowing where to put corals in your tank, but sometimes you're just going to have to work with what you have, and you have to decide what is going to work best in your specific scenario. But if something's not working, then you will have to reach in and rearrange things and handle it a little differently, or you have to improve the flow in the tank by changing things, adding another power head, changing the way the lock line is pointed in the tank so that water is moving to, to a different spot, incorporating a closed loop. I mean, there's a lot of things we can do. When it comes to lighting, you really can't just turn the lights up brighter so that things down low get lots of light because you could end up bleaching all the things that are up high. So you want to be very cautious when it comes to that. Basically set the light to the intensity that you think is right for the tank now and leave it alone as much as possible. I don't recommend going up and down and increasing percentages, especially not going up week after week after week. It's just too fast. And I heard someone speaking about this recently and it made a lot of sense to me. They said a lot of times people with LED lighting will increase the intensity way too soon before the corals can accept it, which is completely different from the lighting we've had previously when we had metal halides and we had T5 bulbs and they just would output a certain amount of light and that was it. You couldn't increase it, you couldn't decrease it. All you could do if you really wanted more wattage was get a much bigger ballast and then a bigger wattage of bulb. Now, I have not had LED lighting over my reef that long. I think it's been four or five months. So I'm not really speaking from experience here, even though I've had LEDs over my refugium. I've had them over my frag tank and I've had them over the anemone cube for eight years. But for my reef specifically, I just would really urge you to take your time. And if you have a certain intensity and things are doing well, rather than cranking them up so they can do even better, hold that thought and just kind of leave things alone. If you can measure par, that's great. So you can at least get some information, but I would not rush to increase the amount of par. I would not rush to increase the duration of light per day. I would try to keep things reasonable and I would leave things alone six or eight weeks before you make little minor tweaks. And then after that, leave it alone again for six or eight weeks. If you rush it, you may end up losing things that you shouldn't have lost in the first place. Please like this video and comment below if you feel the same way. I'd love to hear your thoughts on using LED lighting.